Hi, I'm Heather. Welcome to class. Today we're going to do a slow restorative sequence specifically to help soothe and settle the nerves. And this can help in relieving nervous tension and anxiety. Before we begin, if you find this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe. We're going to start with Supta Baddha Konasana, the reclined bound angle pose. I've got a bolster here, a couple of bricks, a belt and a blanket. We can use the blanket as a head and neck support. So you have that folded according to how much padding or height you need to support the head and the neck when you lay down over the bolster. If you don't have a bolster, you could use a few uh, folded blankets to create the feeling of lift underneath the chest or the rib cage. So we sit with our back to the bolster and we want to make sure that we're sitting on the floor, not on the bolster. We'll use our belt to help keep the legs bound in Baddha Konasana. So make your loop fairly large, put that around the waist and then we'll bring that between the legs. So obviously if the belt's too short and your feet are too far out, it'll be very hard to get the belt around the feet. You do need to bring the feet in close to you so that the belt can go over the feet and around the outer edges of the feet. The belt will come between the inner legs, but watch that it doesn't sit up too high into the lower back. When you lie back, if it's sitting into the lumbar region, it could potentially cause the lumbar to dig in. So we put the belt down low around the sacrum and then we tighten the belt. So as we tighten the belt, you see I've got the tail of the belt facing me. Simply pull on the tail of the belt and it helps to tighten the belt, bringing the feet in closer to me. Now, I've got two bricks. I'm going to put them in place once I've laid down. So you can lean into the hands. Let yourself lean back over the bolster. And for some people it will be helpful to lift the buttocks, draw the buttock flesh tailbone towards the heels more so that you're decreasing the arch in the lower back. Then before you bring the head down, Get your two bricks and wedge them in underneath the outer thighs and outer shins so that there's a feeling of support and the hips aren't having to hold, the inner thighs aren't having to hold. Make sure you get those bricks in a good spot so that you feel well supported. Then when you take your head back, you want to feel that the neck is supported as well as the head. And have the forehead sitting a little higher than the chin. Sometimes I see this, the shoulders may creep forward and the head gets thrown back. And you see the back of the neck shortens, the chin sitting higher than the forehead and doesn't set ourselves up for really settling the mind. So get your support so that it enables that feeling of lengthening the neck You've got the support underneath the neck, but then the forehead sits a little higher than the chin and that allows the mind to really settle. Turn the palms up as you let the arms drape down onto the floor. Forearms, back of the hands on the floor. And the legs relax, they relax into the bricks. If at any stage the legs get uh, a little bit wobbly, if you're holding this for a long time without the bricks, sometimes the legs start to tremor. That's where the bricks come in really handy. They offer support so that you can allow the legs, allow the hips to relax and settle. Now, as we're holding here, we're, we're not holding the muscles of the body. We're, we're letting go. We're relaxing into the support of the props but we're maintaining the pose. So as we maintain the pose, bring your awareness to your breath. Consciously slow your breathing down. So you can start with an exhalation, breathe all the air out of the body, and then a smooth, slow, steady inhalation, feeling the lift of the lower ribs, then the middle ribs, 
then the upper ribs all the way up to the collarbones and then a long slow steady exhalation deflating the upper ribs then the middle ribs then the lower ribs see if you can stay present to the expression of your breath and keep working with that idea of lengthening slowing steadying the breath and we notice that the abdomen does lift somewhat when we inhale but don't try and puff the belly out remember the lungs are in the rib cage see if you can draw the breath in lower ribs middle ribs upper ribs on the inhale and as you exhale abdomen relaxes back and down and the upper ribs the middle ribs and the lower ribs slowly deflate As you continue with that practice, awareness of your breath, slowing the breath, deepening the breath, just check in on the muscles in the throat and the jaw. See if you can relax them. Even notice the tongue. Relax the tongue away from the roof of the mouth. Feel the skin of the cheeks soften. The skin, the muscles around your eyes also soften. Now to add to the length of the torso, let's take the arms overhead. Wrap your fingers around the edges of the elbows. Take your arms overhead so the upper arms come to rest on your blanket. Now the only reason that won't happen is if the shoulders have some level of restriction, in which case you may want to put a rolled up blanket here underneath the forearms. But if when you take your arms overhead, it feels like your deltoid muscles are hitting into this blanket, just move the blanket up a little bit more so it's under the head but not under the neck and then you'll have room for your shoulder muscles, those deltoid muscles, as you take your arms overhead. Stay with your breath, stay aware of your breath, the calming and the going, the steadying and the slowing of both the inhalations and the exhalations. And you'll notice with the arms overhead, how the size of the chest, the side rib cage, the armpit chest area has more space. Slow, smooth, steady inhalation slow smooth steady exhalation now we're going to slowly come out of the pose release the arms and you press the hands into the floor next to your hips as you come to sit up. And once you're up, then you can remove your belt. Take it off from around the waist. And we're going to transition to Supta Virasana. Again, we'll use the bolster to lie back over. If kneeling is problematic for you, 
There are a number of different ways that we can set ourselves up, firstly in Virasana and secondly with the level of support underneath the torso. I haven't got time in this video to go into it for all the different ways that we can approach that. However, I do have a video in my video library on my website, heatherkitchenyoga.com.au, specifically addressing knees in Virasana and Supta Virasana. I'll put the link for that in the description box below. For now, let's set ourselves in Virasana and Supta Virasana. Virasana is our hero pose where the knees are together but the feet are apart and we sit down between the feet. And so if sitting all the way to the floor is problematic, you could put a brick there underneath the buttocks like so, but then you'd need more height to lie back on. So you'd perhaps use two bolsters or maybe a bolster and some folded blankets. We can use our belt and we'll tie the legs together. So let's have the belt coming just underneath the head of the shin. So you see I'm just putting it around the, the knees and it's coming underneath the head of the shins. So you lift the knees up enough that you get the belt under the head of the shins and around the lower part of the thighs, close to the knees. And that's helping to keep the knees together. I want to stay compact. I'm keeping the heels in very close to the outer hips. I can't fit my fingers in there between the outer hips and the heels. And then we lean back. Now as we lean back, we can draw the tailbone, the buttock flesh towards the knees. So we're decreasing perhaps the feeling of intense uh, lumbar lordosis that may happen when we lie back here. So buttock flesh, tailbone towards the knees as you lie back. Find your support. And again, you've got your blanket for your head, for your neck. And you can rest your arms down. Forearms, back of the hands on the floor. Feeling the length through the front body now from the lower abdominal area. Just as we had in Supta Baddha Konasana, it's a slightly different experience now because of the stretch in the front of the thighs. Remember, if it's too strong for you and you find that you aren't able to rest in the pose, you use more height, whether you're lifting up the height underneath the torso only or whether you're also lifting up the height underneath the buttocks as well. We want it to be reasonably comfortable so that we can rest and tune into the breath. Smooth, slow, steady breathing. So again, you can start by exhaling, eliminating the air from the lungs and then come into that long, slow, smooth, steady inhalation. Feel the lower ribs expand and the middle ribs then the upper ribs up to the collarbones. And then as you exhale, the upper ribs deflate, the middle ribs, then the lower ribs. See if you can slow things down. And as you continue with that slow, steady rhythm of breathing, bring your awareness to the face, the facial muscles, the skin. Consciously soften. Can you relax the point between the eyebrows? Can you soften the skin, the muscles around your eyes? And keep the jaw relaxed, teeth apart. Now let's take the arms overhead. Once more, we wrap the fingers around the edges of the elbows, stretch the arms all the way overhead. And again, if 
there's some restriction in the shoulders. Perhaps you've got your brick nearby. You could put your brick there for the forearms to come onto. Or you can have a, a um, rolled up blanket. Or some of us may need to move that blanket up a little bit to give room for these deltoid muscles as we have the arms overhead and the shoulders open in that manner. Stay with your breath. Smooth, slow, steady breathing. Now swap the cross of the forearms, bring the opposite forearm on top. Again, wrap the fingers around the edges of the elbows and stay with your breath. Now we slowly prepare to come out of the pose, release the arms from overhead, bring the hands onto the floor near the hips, press into the hands as you lift up, come out of the reclined pose, we'll remove our belt and come over onto the hands and the knees, so you're opening the back of the knees somewhat. We'll use our bolster to stretch forward onto. So we can have the bolster coming between the knees. We have big toes touching, knees apart. The knees stay within the width of your mat and you bring the bolster just between the inner knees. And we're gonna bring the chest down onto the bolster. So if it's hard for you to come forward, perhaps you can turn your bolster up, maybe you can elevate the bolster if not then put some bricks underneath your bolster so the height of the bricks elevates the bolster for you maybe a blanket on top as well but the idea is to have from above the navel supported as you come down onto the bolster so mindful if the the hips are up quite high you may want to Put something here, a blanket or two, between the buttocks and the heels to work the buttocks back towards so that you come forward with support but you're not digging the lumbar spine in, you're letting that gently round, tailbone down. So as I said, we want hips back and down, chest resting and you can potentially bring your forearms forward for the forehead to rest on. Or you may feel comfortable with the arms draped on the floor on either sides of the bolster and the head turning in one direction. So you decide. 
let's see that the, the feeling is the bolsters supporting from above the navel through to the chest. Shoulders can relax. Buttocks and thighs can relax. And the lumbar spine is long and broad. Then as we become aware of the breath, you'll feel the breath more in the back of the body. Again, see if you can slow your breath down. And then when you're ready, you can come to sit. We're going to set up for one more pose, another supported pose. Let's use our bricks underneath our bolster. So we've got two flat bricks sitting side by side and then the bolster will come on top, running the length of the mat. So there's no brick support under each end of the bolster. We'll also use our belt. So let's sit on the front end of the bolster. We're going to take our belt and bind the legs together just above the knees. So the belt helping to hold the legs together, that can be more restful for the legs then. And when we lie back, you want the tailbone lengthening towards the lower legs and the base of the skull just coming over the front edge or the top edge of the, the bolster. Don't necessarily think that you have to contact the floor with the head. It might depend on the length of your torso. But you want this feeling of equal weight distribution from hips through to head. So the head is reaching backwards. There's some we call neck extension as the buttocks are descending. Let the arms rest on the floor so the chest is quite expansive here and then we'll extend the legs. Now when you extend the legs you may need to readjust your belt, tighten it, but you also might find that as you straighten the legs it's just feels a bit too strong in your lower back. So if that's the case, stay in the pose with the knees bent. The belt helping to hold the legs in place. Again, you may need to just adjust the body a little bit. Feel You want to feel that the skin on the back is being dragged down towards the hips and the, and the buttock flesh being dragged down towards the heels. We spend a few moments Feeling the body as it settles on to the support. Observing the neck. Make sure your neck is supported. The back of the neck is well supported with your bolster. And again, we come back to that smooth, slow, steady rhythm of breathing. Can you relax the spinal muscles onto the bolster? as your attention moves to the breath. And we'll take the arms overhead. So again, we take the fingers, wrap them all the way around the edges of the elbows, stretch the arms overhead. The arms may or may not touch the floor. It depends on how long your upper arms are, how high your setup of the bolster and the bricks is, and how open your shoulders are. Don't force yourself to reach for the floor. You just allow gravity to help in the opening of the shoulders and 
if at any stage it feels as if you're getting pins and needles in the fingers or the shoulders start to ache, they feel uncomfortable in this position after some time, then you can come back with the arms on the floor on either sides of the body or potentially you can even have the fingers interlocked across the abdomen if that's more comfortable for the shoulders. But if you can manage, you maintain arms overhead and feel how that adds to the elongation through the trunk. If there's any feeling of the knees hyperextending, if there's a tendency for the knees to drop towards the floor, you could roll up a blanket and wedge that underneath the back of the knees in this pose. Smooth, slow, steady inhalation. Smooth, slow, steady exhalation. Swap the cross of the forearms, opposite forearm in front. Again, fingers are holding, they're wrapped around the elbow tips. Spinal muscles saying broad. So those spinal muscles softening, spreading onto the bolster. Notice if there's any gripping there. Now we'll slowly release the arms from overhead and bend up the knees. Slide the hips back towards the floor and let yourself stay reclined on the bolster for a moment. Buttocks on the floor, spine and head resting on the bolster. And then as you're ready, you can come to sit up and we'll remove the belt from the legs. Now let's sit facing the bolster again. This time we'll sit in simple cross legs so you can remove those bricks. Simple cross legs. If the hips feel tight, you can sit up on a blanket and even still, if the hips feel tight when you attempt to come forward, we want to rest the forehead down. Perhaps you bring a chair here and you bring your forearms to the chair to rest your forehead there. But if you can reach forward to the bolster, perhaps you take the bolster up. In fact, let's turn the bolster this way because it's good to have the armpit chest long. So if we've got the forearms on the bolster, then you can rest the forehead on the bolster as well. Whereas if you have the bolster like this, the tendency is for the forearms to drop onto the floor as we rest the head down and the armpit chest doesn't have as much length. So bring the bolster across the width of your mat, take your forearms onto the bolster with the forehead also resting on the bolster. The arms can be relaxed and the hips allowing for this flexion forward. 
And again, we come back into awareness of the breath. Slowing the breath down. And without disturbing yourself too much, come up just enough that you can swap the cross of the legs, opposite shin in front, and again, let's come forward, rest the arms and rest the forehead. Shoulders relaxed, hips relaxed. Inner and upper thighs also relaxed. And perhaps you can lengthen your exhalations. Now, as you're ready, we slowly come to sit. Don't be in a hurry. Just find your upright posture here in simple cross legs. And for a moment, feel free to close your eyes and observe your state. We've done a very slow restorative practice, specifically to soothe the nerves, to settle any feeling of nervous tension and anxiety and here we're just observing how has the practice affected us. And when you're ready you can open your eyes and finish with the practice. If you're interested in practicing more restorative classes with me, I have a number of restorative classes in my video library on my website amongst many other classes. I invite you to go over heatherkitchenyoga.com.au and start your subscription with a seven day free trial. That's it for today. Thanks for joining me. For more in-depth teaching, check out the video library on my website heatherkitchenyoga.com.au the link is in the description box below.